Alex, I love contemplating cosmology to understand what it's all about. And I look for different ways of thinking about it. So not just the, the traditional way. What, what are different ideas that we can, we can use, different lenses to look at the universe? You've talked about the principle of mediocrity, meaning that whatever we are, we can't think of ourselves as something special. Now, how, how does that help us understand the cosmos? Uh, the principle of mediocrity uh, is useful when you try to uh, test your theories about what the universe looks like in places where we cannot see. Uh, so, uh, theory of inflation tells us that, um, that there is this uh, enormous inflating universe producing bubbles with different properties. Each bubble being a separate universe. Each bubble being a separate universe, but all this is happening beyond our cosmic horizon. Yeah. We, can, we don't see any of those bubbles. Yeah. Can't, because beyond the speed of light to see it. Yeah. Exactly. And how, do, how can we test that? Um, uh, well, if we have the theory, we can um, explore the, theoretically the properties of all these different bubbles. And we can ask, what do observers in, in these different bubbles are going to see? Uh, and suppose we work this all out and we, do, we found what these different observers see. Now, what, do, what can we expect to see? We cannot tell for sure, but we can uh, tell probabilistically if we assume that we are typical observers. If you think we are not really ex some exceptional observers, that we are typical, then we see what most of the observers mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this way, we can make predictions. And actually, one prediction has already been made in this uh, uh, way about the uh, magnitude of the dark energy or the cosmological constant. Mm -hmm. And that was confirmed by, by observation. So this uh, may be our first evidence for the existence of uh, the multiverse. And it was made based on the principle of mediocrity. And, and, and specifically, how did that work? What, why did the principle of mediocrity uh, uh, enable you to theoretically to predict a certain value of the cosmological constant? Um, the cosmological constant, the, the magnitude of the cosmological constant uh, has an effect on the formation of galaxies. Right. And if it is very large, then no galaxies form. Right. Because very cosmological very constant is basically yeah. a produce a repulsive force right. Right. which prevents matter from collapsing. Yeah. So Counteracting uh, gravity. Yeah. yeah, it counteracts gravity. So. Uh, Cosmological constant, uh, if it is uh, smaller, then you, you may have marginal, like, a few galaxies here and there. And if it is uh, still smaller, then you have lots of galaxies, like what uh, we appear to see. Now, where can we expect to find ourselves? If we are typical observers, we are where all the galaxies are. So um, that, that uh, tells us that uh, what values of the cosmological constant are likely to be observed, and, and that's how it was predicted. Is there a problem because of the so-called anthropic or selection effect that, that we are, it's fine to consider ourselves through the principle of mediocrity, but the fact that we exist at all is a huge self-selection. I mean, if you just throw up the laws of physics and randomly, the, the likelihood of, 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 of a set of, 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 uh, of constants or rules that, that will pr allow a universe like this is, is a very small percentage. So by, by the very fact alone that we're asking the question, is, it, it, it seems to contradict the, the principle of mediocrity. Um, uh, well, uh, it, you have to specify what is mediocre. We, we, uh, the, the principle of mediocrity does not say that we are in a typical environment in the universe. Okay. Because, of course, typical environment, even in our part of the universe, would be some intergalactic space. Right. We are not there. Right. We are where we can be. Right. So the principle of mediocrity says that we are typical observers. Okay. So most of these uh, bubbles in, in the inflating multiverse are probably barren, um, since the uh, physical uh, properties of those bubbles are not suitable for life. So they don't have any observers. They don't have any observers. There's nobody there to complain about the conditions. <laughs> but in, in those bubbles where there are observers, the assumption is that among, we are typical among the observers mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. multiverse. And based on that, we can make predictions. What, what, what other predictions might you make? I, even though you haven't, does, theoretically, what other kinds of predictions would the principle of mediocrity allow you to make? Um, uh, well, the, one, um, 
one prediction that has been made, but has not yet been tested, is about the neutrino masses. Mm -hmm. So neutrinos are very light particles and very weakly interacting, and for that reason it's hard to determine their properties. Particularly, we have bounds on their masses, but we don't know exactly what the mass is. And the magnitude of that mass also affects formation of galaxies. Um, and so you're able to predict that because we know the, 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 uh, the situation with galaxies that we see. Uh, that's right. It's, um, the situation with neutrinos is not as clean as with cosmological constant because um, uh, in the case of cosmological constant, we are able to um, predict the, how likely different values of the cosmological constant to occur in different bubbles, regardless of the humans. And then we ask, okay, now we can ask about galaxies. With neutrinos, this first step is not as clean, so. Uh, could you ever see violations of the principle of mediocrity? And uh, conversely, how powerful do you think that principle is for allowing us to discern new things about the cosmos? Um, well, uh, I th we use the principle of mediocrity all the time. Uh, in, in physics, if you do any experiment, uh, there are errors of measurement. So the physicists report the results of the experiment. It is some value x plus or minus y. And this tells you that, okay, we measured x, but, it, but there is some uncertainty. And in fact, the uncertainty can be even larger, although that's highly unlikely. So there will be some unlucky guys who did this experiment and, and got a totally wrong result because just because of the statistical fluctuation. So we assume that we are mediocre observers, like most observers who do this experiment, we, do it, we will get it, the right result. So I think it is very powerful and without it we wouldn't be able to do anything.